board on today's show. I'm Nick Roloff of NBA Now. Reason why we're doing a big board? Well, yesterday, May 29th, was the date that, or the deadline, I should say, that you had to with quest withdraw from the NBA draft. So there are a couple prospects that I had in my top 30 that are no longer in the draft. So we're going to have an updated top 30 big board going into the draft in late June. But first, make sure you follow me over on Twitter because if you want more NBA draft coverage leading up to June 26th and the 27th, which is the first and second rounds, my handle is at Nick underscore Roloff, and I'm talking NBA draft almost every single day. So if you have a question on a prospect or just want more daily coverage, follow me at Nick underscore Roloff. All right, we'll keep it brief for the top withdraws that caught my eye. And it all starts with Mark Sears, the guard from Alabama. He's heading back to Nate Oates and the Crimson Tide. I had him as a top 30 guy. A lot of comparisons to Jalen Brunson. Undersized, but a crafty scorer, a lefty that knows how to get to his spots and a solid three-point shooter. Alex Caravan heading back to Stores, Connecticut to play for the Huskies, looking for that back-to-back-to-back national title championship so we'll see what caravan can do in his third year hunter salise is a projected second round pick he's heading back to the college scene peyton sanford heading back and then an intriguing one coleman hawkins he's been in college for five years already thought this was the time he was going to come out but he evidently goes back to the college level he is not going back to illinois for sure he is in the transfer portal. Those are the top five guys that caught my eye on, which means Bronny James is still in the draft. I think it's a mistake, but he at least is still here. All right, so let's dive into the big board here, the second one that I put together. And number one for the second consecutive big board is Alex Saar, the forward slash center from Perth. He is just so dynamic on the defensive side of the floor, and he is a crafty finisher around the rim. Needs to improve on some things like most of these prospects, but his high upside on the defensive end of the floor still has him as my number one guy. A riser amongst us, number two, and now jumping up from number four, Zachary Risa-Share from JL Borg. He has been performing really strongly in his EuroLeague uh, playoff run. And that effort and that ability to show up at the biggest moments of his league right now is the reason why he's jumping off my board or up my board, I should say. He also is so dynamic in terms of scoring. He could do it on catch and shoot. He can do it off the dribble. Sure, he needs to improve on some things, but as high as an upside as there is in this class. That makes Nikola Topic fall from two to three on my previous big board. No hate to Topic. I still love him, and I think he is the best pure point guard in this NBA draft class because he has such a good high IQ, and his ability to whip the ball around on the offensive side is just absolutely ridiculous. Still think he should hope to fall to number four so he can be drafted by the San Antonio Spurs to run a pick and roll with Wemby, but Topic is at number three. That's a fall for Matas Buzilis as well, G League Ignite forward. He goes from three to four for me. Still love his game, just got jumped by Risa Sher and what he's been able to showcase over in his postseason. Big fan of Risa Sher's jump, which is what has made Topic and Buzilis fall a little bit, but both love those two upsides. We went through the top four on my updated NBA draft big board, but I want you to let me know who you think should take that top spot. Who is the best player in the NBA draft? It could be anyone. I think Sar is the consensus, but it's not like unanimous, right? There's still a lot of doubt on who is that number one guy, so let me know yours down below. Number five here, Reed Shepard. He jumps up into the top five for the first time. The guard from Kentucky. Reason why I really think he jumps here to that fifth spot is how easy he can slide into any situation. You need a movement shooter that can play off ball? Reed Shepard's your guy. You need a role player coming off the bench that can give you high energy defensively? Reed Shepard's your guy. You need someone that can run the point and handle the ball distribute? Reed Shepard's your guy. One of the most versatile guards in this draft. 42-inch vertical. Can shoot the piss out of the ball as well. Big fan of his game. Talking about shooting the piss out the ball. Dalton Connect rises from 8-6 to six on my last big board. The forward from Tennessee only did himself favors at the NBA Combine. He measured well. Has NBA size and length. 
but also is one of the best volume three-point shooters in this draft class. Big fan of him, and I expect him to get his name called quite early. I would say the last and latest he goes is number eight to the Spurs. Number seven, Stefan Castle, the guard from Connecticut, slides from five to seven on this most recent big board. Why, you ask? I'm getting a little turned off by his pre-draft antics here. He's reportedly not taking workouts and meetings with teams that need or don't need a traditional point guard. Castle was a point guard in high school and then transitioned to a combo guard two slash three while playing in Connecticut, helping the Huskies win a second straight national championship, but evidently wants to go back to that pure point guard role. I think Castle was better fit to be any type of guard, whether it be in the off-ball route or whether it be in the on-ball so to me, I don't get why he's specifying himself and classifying him to one spot, but either way, Castle here at seven. Another Husky here at number eight, Donovan Klingen, the center from UConn. He falls from seven to eight. Don't love his athletic testing. That's a little bit of a concern for me. He's still got fantastic size and can be compared to a Rudy Gobert-esque center who could just protect the rim. But the questions with his, his athleticism goes to the lateral portion. Can he move his feet? Can he switch potentially in NBA defenses? Because if he can't, you're just going to see him get hyper-targeted like Rudy Gobert has in the late playoffs. And Rudy Gobert is a four-time defensive player of the year. Number nine, Jared McCain. He slides up to this spot after being outside my top 10 originally. McCain, I've just really fallen in love with him in this pre-draft process. His ability to shoot the three ball at above 40% for the Duke Blue Bowl Devils a year ago. But in high school, he played on ball. That's kind of the concern with McCain. Can he go back to that and be a traditional point guard because he is only 6'2", or is he going to have to play off ball? I think McCain can play both. He can defend. He's stocky. He's got some good weight to him. McCain's going to be a guy that a, one team falls in love with and could draft super high in this draft. The biggest riser, yes, that is correct. The biggest riser in this class for me right now is Devin Carter, the guard from Providence, going from 18 to 10. I officially have him as a top 10 guy. Carter, who also flashed a 42-inch vertical at the NBA Combine. He's got 6'3 height with a 6'8 wingspan, so he's got freaky athleticism and freaky measurables. He's just a winning basketball player who also shot 38-plus percent from three for Providence while averaging 19 points a game. I think Carter is going to end up going top 10. There's buzz for him in connecting him to the Memphis Grizzlies with the ninth overall pick, I think Carter is going to be someone that goes surprisingly early when we're talking in late June. Cody Williams drops from 9 to 11 for me here. And if you just looked at the 11th team drafting, it would be the Chicago Bulls, which is actually a terrific fit for Cody Williams, by the way. But he's got great length, just like his brother Jalen Williams on the Oklahoma City Thunder. And he could defend. He could shoot the three ball. So if he's able to really just continue to progress in the NBA, I think he is very, very worth a top selection. Rob Dillingham here, number 12. A little bit of a slidey guy. Like I'm just not sold on Dillingham's like long-term future in the NBA. Why, you ask? Well, it's because he is so undersized. Not in terms of height, but he's just so fragile, at least in terms of weight right now. He, I just, like, 165? Like, I'm just skeptical of how he's going to handle physicality inside the NBA, and that is kind of why I have him a little bit lower. Tristan Da Silva is here at number 13, jumping up four spots for me. Just a complete well-rounded player here. He can defend. He can shoot the three ball. He's lengthy. That's one of the reasons why I really like him. Any team that is contending and wants to try to add a real good piece to their rotation to get minutes right away. The Silva could be that dude. You think about the teams taking or picking late lottery or just outside the lottery, Sixers at 16, Heat at 15, Warriors, Kings, like all four of those teams are trying to get back to winning right now. So why wouldn't you take the Silva who can do an impact on winning at all phases of the game? Make sure you are subscribed to us here at Chat Sports because when it comes to the NBA draft, no one has it better than us. We will be live for both 
of the days on the NBA draft. Yes, you heard both. It's now two days, not one. June 26th is the first round, the first 30 selections, and then the last 28 picks, because there's two forfeited picks in the second round on the second day. We'll be live for both. I'll be live spearheading that coverage, so make sure you are subscribed. All right, the last lottery, I guess, player I have here is Isaiah Collier, the guard from USC, jumping up from 15 to 14. He tested well at the NBA Combine, one of the most dynamic finishers at the rim from the guard position out of the college level, is also a fantastic playmaker. He just needs to develop more of a shot, and I think people were disappointed with how USC was performing at terms of wins, losses, and maybe that turned off people on Collier a little bit, but I'm still a big fan of his game. Another riser here, Kalel Ware, the center from Indiana, jumping up from 21 to 15 in this most recent big board, and I'm not sure. I feel like the range on where is pretty high. Some people might have him as a lotto pick. Some people might have him all the way down at end of first round, early second round. The question with where is his motor? He took some plays off in his freshman year at Oregon, got a little bit better at Indiana this past year, but he possesses elite skills and traits to be a dynamic center in the NBA. And if he's able to keep that motor at least afloat in the NBA, any team will really like him, but 6'11 and three quarters, can shoot the three ball effectively, block shots. He struggled against some traditional centers and big time players like Klingon, Zach Eady, uh, Hunter Dickinson, and Jamari Broom from Auburn this past season. But Ware does have the traits that would intrigue a lot of NBA teams. Back half of my big board coming up in just a second, but make sure you are started with Prize Picks, the best daily fantasy sports app on the market, and join more than 5 million members that are playing Prize Picks on a daily basis by just picking more or less on two or more player stat projections. With Prize Picks, you could turn $10 into a thousand in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer you can make prize picks line up in as little as 60 seconds you just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and you're locked in like i'm locked in for tonight's game between the dallas mavericks and timberwolves could be the last game of this series so get in on the action now i got more than luka Doncic three and a half threes less than 19 and a half points for carnity towns and more than 15 and a half points and rebounds for Daniel Gafford. And when the finals are over, by the way, the hoops action doesn't stop on prize picks. So the women's basketball game and season is underway. Young stars like Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Cameron Brink are looking to make names for themselves along the greats of Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson. And you could win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out as well. So download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. You can also hit the link in the description and comments, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Code CLNS to get a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Back to the big board here with Ron Holland, who fell three spots. 16th, and I don't know, man. I like Holland. He's got great athleticism. He's a solid finisher around the rim. He projects as someone who could be one of the best wing defenders in the NBA as well. But his jump shot is just so bad. 21 of his misses this past year at the G League were air balls or barely hitting front rim. And my question is, is he going to be able to develop that jumper? If he is, like, fine, he'll be a good player in the NBA. But if he can't, he'll just be like Josh Giddy out there. But the thing with Giddy is that you can play him because of how well he play makes. That's not the most strong part of Holland's game either. You can play him because of his defense, but if he doesn't develop a jump shot in the first two or three years of his career, he might be played out of the NBA. Jacoby Walter with a pretty big fall here. The guard from Baylor down to 17 in my big board. I loved him coming out of high school going to Baylor. I also loved him halfway through this collegiate season, but struggled a little bit at the end of the year. I think he can be a solid 3 and D 2 guard in the NBA, but to me, I think he's just been passed up by some of these other prospects who have had stronger closes to their collegiate season and stronger showings at the NBA Combine. Johnny Furphy, the forward from Kansas, coming in here at 18. The question with him is if he was going to stay in the class. He was one of the top prospects that most people actually believed was going to return to the collegiate level. Two freshmen from Australia needs a lot of work, but has some of the most smooth mechanics when you talk about jump shooting and the way it looks. I think Furphy has a 
good chance of being a developmental 3 and D forward in the NBA. Big fan of 10. Filipowski falls. I've always been a Kyle Filipowski guy, but he falls in this most recent big board. 19th here, forward center out of Duke. He's just not as good of an athlete as some other big men like Kalel Ware and like Alex Saar, like uh, Donovan Klingon. Filipowski possesses some more offensive game than those guys. He could step out and shoot the ball from beyond the arc much more efficiently than some of these other centers, but he just lacks the ability to be a rim protector and switching defender in the NBA because Filipowski actually has a negative wingspan. That's not ideal, folks. Number 20, Tajani Saloon. And maybe this is actually technically the highest riser because I didn't have him ranked on my last big board. He comes in at number 20 here. He has performed quite well for Cholette overseas. He has athleticism. He could finish at the rim at a quick rate. I like Saloon's game. And I think a team that you should keep your eye out for him is potentially the Knicks at 24 and 25. If they keep those picks, they could use one of them on an impact player and one of them on a high upside guy like Saloon. Number 21, Kai Sean George, the forward from Miami, sliding from 19 to 21 in this most recent change. I like George. I saw someone compare him to Nick Batum the other day, and I actually can't unsee it. He's got that nice little smooth jumper. He's got length. He can defend. Not going to be someone that probably takes a leap and is like an all-star or anything like that, but can be a high-level role player in the NBA. Tyler Smith jumps up to 22 here from 25 the last time. And even though I did say Smith was a loser at the NBA Combine due to his struggles shooting the ball and stationary three-point shooting drills and at the free throw line, he's just got so much length, man. 6'10", 6'11", great wingspan. Looks to be one of the most versatile defenders in this draft class as well. Great finisher. He could slam it on top of you, but finish with some finesse at times as well. It's just all about if Smith can develop a J, because if he can, well, then we're talking about a two-way player. But if he can't, you're going to really just have a Jared Vanderbilt-esque player on your hands. Speaking of Tyler Smith and the G League, that is no more. The G League Ignite is disbanding, whatever you want to call it. So now some of these players are forced to go to college, which makes me smile because I like the college game uh, very much, and I like to see some of these top guys go there rather than overseas in the G League Ignite. So are you happy the G League Ignite is ending? Type Y for yes or type N for no. All right, Eves Misi here, the center from Baylor, actually staying at his same position that he was on my previous big board. Still one of the most athletic, rim-protecting centers that – is in this class a team that would love to take him how about the phoenix suns at 22 because they could use a backup center to nurkic nurkic could also be on the move this offseason so misi could fill some of that depth needed at center carlton carrington a riser here the guard from pitt and he's just been climbing up a lot of people's boards for in this draft process he's thick he can score at all three levels He's got athleticism. He came out of the scene, man. Like, he was a freshman at Pitt. No one expected him to really do anything crazy and then was just balling out for Capel in the ACC. Carrington, any team that needs a guard that has or wants upside long term but also can impact the roster and rotation right away will be in the market for his services. Ryan Dunn falls from 20 to 25, the Virginia Ford. He is just not... A good offensive player, man. But he is so elite defensively. That's the issue I have with Dunn. I had him as a top 20 guy because he is so elite on the defensive side of the floor. He just has no jumper. He struggles finishing around the rim at times. Like, if you're looking for a defensive stopper, Ryan Dunn's your guy. Great height, great wingspan, great everything. He's also very quick. But, man, he cannot score on offense. Darren Holmes, uh, Daron Holmes. From Dayton out of the A-10, a flyer, staying here at 26. Uh, I just like the way he moves, man. He's got great lateral quickness, good athleticism, showcased a jumper in the March Madness tournament when they took down Nevada and took down or fought with Arizona in the second round. I like Holmes and think he will fall to a nice spot for anyone needing a backup center. We'll stay with a center here. Zach Eady, someone I didn't have ranked on my last big board. I've always said I don't think he's a first-round player. I made that change now. 
that might be because of some other guys falling out, a.k.a. Mark Sears, a.k.a. Caravan. I had Caravan as a fringe first-rounder. I did have Sears as a first-round guy. Zach Eady reaps the benefits, at least according to myself, and he's here at 27. Kevin McCuller falls from 22 to 28, one of the biggest fallers in this draft. And, I mean, I, I like McCuller, man. He could still do some nice things. He is very similar to Tristan De Silva, but I think De Silva is more athletic and has less injury concern because McCuller did miss most of this past season with the Kansas Jayhawks, but was averaging 22 points per game prior to him leaving the college scene. He is a good wing who can be a 3 and D guy. I like McCuller, but just falling down my board. Baylor Shireman with a big-time jump from mid-second round pick to late first round pick, who I think I could still see him climb closer to the 20s and maybe late teens. When he gets into these gyms working out personally for some of these teams and front offices, they're going to fall in love with his shooting ability. One of the best shooters in college basketball a year ago for the Creighton Blue Jays. He could just score at all three levels as well. Not going to blow by you, crafty left-hander. I don't want to do the lefty thing, but I see a lot of Joe. Uh, it's like a smaller Joe Ingles in Baylor Shireman. Last guy we'll talk about today, Nikola Durisic, the forward from Serbia, who actually played on Mega Basket, the same team that Nikola Jovic did when he was overseas. He comes in here after not being ranked. I like his size, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, good wingspan. He's smooth, man. He can get to his shot at any point, whether it be off one dribble pull-up or a crossover. Like what he brings to the table. Also a decent passer. Big fan of Durisic's game. Question is, how is he going to be able to defend in the NBA? But he played really well at the two scrimmages during the NBA Combine, so would not shock me if he gets his name called in the first 30 picks of the NBA draft. All right, that's all we'll talk about, at least today. We're only going to do top 30. Maybe when we get closer to the draft, I'll do a full top 60 big board. Let me know if you guys would want that. But at least in the top 30, let me know a player I left off the big board Call me out, yell at me, do whatever you want down below. Also, make sure you are following me on Twitter, like I said off the top. More draft coverage on my Twitter, X, whatever you want to call, at Nick underscore Roloff. If you have a question about any prospect, don't be afraid to DM me. My DMs are open, and I will respond. So go follow me right now at Nick underscore Roloff.